morning, everyone. Happy Lord's Day again. Are you ready this morning to hear the Word of God? Man. 2003. Maybe you, you thought it's a weird, a weird title for this message for this morning, on the first day of the week, on the day of the Lord, but we are in the 2023. And the sum of the 2023 is equal seven. The topic of my message is that. We are gonna be talking about number seven, not about the year 2023. But I choose this title because some theologians and scholars said, Number seven, the significance of number seven in the Bible is that something is going to happen or something happened when the Bible mentioned the number seven. I don't know about that. I remember uh, we are in the 2023. 20, I, don't, I don't know it's going to happen something in this year in my life, probably in your lives, happened something like last year. Or the years that are coming through, only the Lord knows. And I remember in, in uh, 2012, people were saying it's the end of the world. And I remember when Brother Lalo prepared some lessons, said, don't scare, just be prepared, trusting in the Lord and believing in God, because no one knows the end of the world except God. And now we are in the 2023, 20, and people again is saying things, saying something is going to happen in this year because the addition or the sum of this year is equal seven. What does seven symbolize biblically? We got in the world seven wonders. Even in the world, we can see the number seven. When the Lord God created everything after the flood, you remember, he also created the rainbow. How many colors has the rainbow? Seven. Seven colors. Again, we find the number seven. And I said before, some minutes ago, something could happen. The a scholar or the, theologian said something could happen this year because the sum of this year is seven. <laughs> in, my, in my home, something already happened. And my son Carlos took my dog to the park for a walking and to play with other dogs. And by accident, she got pregnant. And she conceived, brothers and sisters, seven puppies. Seven puppies. Like I said, something already happened in my life, with my family, seven puppies. A lot of work, concern, waking up before to go to work, to take care of them, to clear up, busy, busy, busy. But we don't know, like I said before, we don't know. But what does number say, number seven, I'm sorry, symbolize biblically? Let's go ahead with our lessons. In the Old and New Testament, we find the number seven in the Old and New Testament. This number is repeated several times in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and also in the New Testament. For example, in the Old Testament, we got in the Old Testament, we got seven days of creation. The Lord God created the entire universe in seven days. All of us that we read the Bible, we know that. Seven days of the creation. No six days. By the way, the number six is the number that belongs to the man. Number six. Is the number that belongs to man. In the book of Revelation, we find the, the, 
talking about the bees, uh, the Apostle John said, this number, talking about the, the bees, 666, six, six, or 666, and this is an, a number of men. Number six belongs to the man. The Lord God, in the creation that he created, everything in seven days, in the sixth, sixth day, he created the man. So that number belonged to the man, belonged to us. Seven days in the Old Testament, seven days of creation. Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. We don't have time to be reading all that. Before the flood, before the, or, or the flood, the Lord God spoke to Noah and said to Noah, enter to the ark. You and your household, you and your family. Because I have found grace before you. Enter to the ark. But not only you. Take with you seven pairs of clean animals. Again, the number seven. Again, why not six? Six pairs. What no five or two? Seven pairs. Genesis chapter 7, verse 1 and verse 2. Again, in the Old Testament, seven things that the Lord hates and abominates. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through verse 19. Seven things, again, that the Lord hates and abominates. Again, we find the number seven, and many, many more uh, verse and chapter that mention the number seven. For example, the Messiah in the Old Testament, uh, the prophet Isaiah said that the Messiah will come with the power of the seven spirit. And we read that one in the book of Revelation, the seven spirit of God in the lion and over uh, uh, the lamb that is Jesus Christ. What about the what about the New Testament? Again in the New Testament in the New Testament we find again the number seven. Seven a young statement of Jesus Christ. Seven, the seven a young statements of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, number one, a young, the bread of life. John chapter six, verse 35. A young, the bread of life. We need bread to survive or to live every day we need water we need bread we are hungry we are working we're spending energy and we need to recover the energy so we need bread but jesus said i am the bread of life we need the bread the physical bread to live jesus is saying i am the bread of life not only to survive physically in this world but forever. Number two, Jesus said again, I am the light of the world. We are worried, we are in problem with the PGE is failing and the light is gone. We don't like to be in darkness. The things in the fridge are, are, are are, are, are not working, everything is, 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 is bad, and we are a stumble in the house, we are remembering that there is walls, and we are trying to touch the walls to, to get guidance and to continue walking because we are in darkness, we need the light. And Jesus is saying, I am the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12 in John chapter 9, verse 5. 
That's the number two. The number three, Jesus said, I am the door. The door, the entrance. To cross, uh, to open, I am, I am that. John chapter 10, verse 7. Number four, I am the good shepherd. We are like sheep and we need guidance. And he said, I am the good shepherd. Not only shepherd, I am good shepherd. There are many shepherds. There were many shepherds in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. For example, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were shepherds, but not good shepherds. But he's saying, he's making the difference. I am the good shepherd. And this is the, the number four. John chapter 10, verse 11 through verse 14. Number five, I am the resurrection and the life. We are scared to die. People is scared to be dead. Jesus said, don't be afraid. I am the resurrection and the life. I am, again. Number six, I am the way and the truth and the life. People is saying, oh, I got my truth. Jesus said, I am the general truth. I am the truth. I am, he's re repeating again. I am the way, or I am the door. And I am, and the life. I am the life. John chapter 14, verse 6. Number seven, and the number seven, I am the true vine. We are the branches, but Jesus is the true vine. I am. Again, the number seven. Seven, I am, or seven statements of Jesus Christ. I am. He is the great I am. Similar to the great I am, that appeared to Moses in the Old Testament. I am the great I am. Moses asked to him, what is your name? And the Lord responded to Moses, I am the great I am. I am what I am. And Jesus is saying right here to the Jews, I am, I am, I am for seven times. Again, in the new, In the New Testament, again, we find the number seven again. Seven parables of Jesus about the kingdom, according to the Apostle Matthew. He spoke more than seven parables. He spoke almost about 20 parables. But Matthew is numbering seven parables that are talking about the kingdom. Or about the church. We are the kingdom of God. We are the church. In other words, Jesus was speaking or teaching or preaching about the church. Seven parables about the kingdom, according to Matthew. Number one, the hidden treasure. To find the church or to find the truth is not easy. There are too many churches around. Before to came to the building, when I was driving away to the building, I saw the Baptist church from blocks ago. Many cars were going inside, driving inside. I was sad. And I thought, all these people, they are thinking they, they are worshiping to the Lord rightly. But it's not like that. So sad. A lot of cars in the parking lot inside. And I thought, to find the truth is no easy. That was Jesus was preaching right here in this parable. The hearing treasure. It's not easy to find a treasure. It's not so easy to find the truth. But we can find it. We need to search, we need to ask, we need to knock. We need to ask. Number two, 
That was Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Number two, the peril of great price. The value of the charge or the value of the truth is so great. Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 through verse 46. And number three, the household treasures. Matthew 13, 52. The gist. The gist. The kingdom got a gist, a doctrine, a sound doctrine. We are worshiping to God with a sound doctrine. We were singing, and people ask sometimes, why you are not using instruments? Is because you don't have money to buy instruments? What's the reason? No, that's not the reason. The reason is because the Lord is not commanding to do it that way. So, the gist, Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Number five, the most are seed. It's a, small, a smaller seed. But when we plant this seed, it became a big tree. So the kingdom is growing up. If we are, sorry about this. If we are sowing the seed of the kingdom, that is the word of God, the kingdom is going to become bigger and bigger and bigger. But brothers and sisters, when Jesus was teaching about this parable, he was teaching that we need to work. That's the only way. Working, working and working, the kingdom is going to grow up. And number six, the sprouting seed. If he talk of the parable of the sower, he thought about that. Sower, we are the sower. The seed is the word of God. And we need to plant the word of God. Sometimes, don't, don't be disappointed. If we plant the seed of God and we don't see results. That's not the pain of us, the pain of God. But the command is to sow the seed. That's the command that the Lord Jesus is commanding, or that was the purpose of this parable. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. And the number seven, the number seven parable, according to Matthew, the dragnet, or the parable of the net. The fisher God to fish. He throw the net to catch fishes. And when we go to fish, we catch different, different kind of fishes. So let's go outside. Jesus is saying, and we are going to conquer different kinds of people, different kinds of hearts. And again, the number seven. Seven parables of Jesus according to Matthew. But what's the number seven symbolized biblically? The number seven signify fullness and perfection. That's the reason that God is using the number seven. Because it's fullness and perfection. Probably more than this. Because if we are saying that this number belongs to God, God is infinity. I can limit God saying means only that, more than that, beyond than that. But I'm not able to explain that. But in my own words, I can say that. That means fullness and perfection. Examples. Biblical examples. Naaman. Thanks, Brother Alex, for the spiritual reading. Naaman, the general Naaman, the leper. I call him Naaman the leper. Second Kings chapter 5. We find in the second book of, uh, of the Kings, chapter 5, the uh, story of, of the general Naaman. 
He was a powerful general. But he was leprous. And he wanted to be healed, but no, no cure for that sickness at that time. But some of, of, of the servants told him, Master, in Israel, there is a prophet. There is hope in Israel. No in Syria, no right here in our country, but in Israel. Because the Lord is there. Because that's the people of God. There is hope in God. There is hope in his church. There is hope in his kingdom. And he said, okay, okay. The servant persuade him, okay, I'm going to go to try to find uh, some healing. And he decided to go uh, to Israel. And was getting to Israel, they gave the, the news to the prophets. Somebody's needing your help. And the prophet said, okay, I'm going to heal him. And I'm going to send a messenger and tell to the general, go to the Jordan River and watch seven times in the river. And you will be here. That's it. Easy and simple. What happened? The general became angry. Oh, no, I am a powerful man. I am a general. I need, I deserve respect. It's not possible that this man, this guy is going to receive me like that, just sending me a, a messenger and saying like that. For the prophet was just a man that was in need. That's what the Lord is saying. That is the way that the Lord is going to hear you, and that's it. And what happened with the general? He became angry. Start protesting, murmuring. Come on. I wasn't expecting that way. I was expecting came to me, put his hand over me, and start praying for me, and saying, in the name of Jehovah my Lord, you will be here. Brothers and sisters, that is our thoughts sometimes. That's our thoughts sometimes. Uh, I'm thinking that to worship God or to adore God is gonna it should be in this way. In this way that I'm thinking, I'm gonna try to find it in the Bible. And we get surprises because his will is not our will. His way are not our ways. Are different ways. We must to learn to be humble and submit to God. And the general start coming angry, protesting. I'm going back to my country. We have much better rivers in my country. If my healing consists in that, water is water. I could be washed over there in my country. And the rivers are much better than this Jordan. That's not the point. That's not the point. Other building could be better building than this one. That's not the point. The point is, are we teaching? Are we practicing? Are we worshiping God truly according to his word or not? That's the true point. God said in the Jordan, and that's it. God said, worship me in the spirit and in truth. That's it. And the servant persuaded him, and he did it. And he became healed. His flesh was healed. No more leprosy. That's what we are saying right now. That the number seven means fullness and perfection. It doesn't mean that in the first watch, it became a little clean. Second, much better. Neither to the sixth. No. He watched the first time. He was looking the same. 
Hey, what happened? Nothing is changing. The leprosy continues in my body. Second time, fifth time, sixth time. But what happened in the seventh? He became clean. Perfection and fullness in the number seven. What about the conquest of Jericho? During seven days, walk around. Walk around the city. The people of Jericho, probably they thought, these guys are crazy. These guys are very crazy, walking around and around and around. They already got one week, seven days. Seven days walking around. And our walls are still stained and firm. It's impossible to penetrate or to pass to the other side of this wall. Yes, for man, it's, it was impossible. But not for God. Not for the Lord. And the seventh day, the Lord said to the Israelites, seven day walk again. But this day, how many times? Seven. This day, in the seventh day, seven times. The seventh day was different than the other six days. Again, it means fullness and perfection. And the world fell down, not because Israelites walk around, because God, it was because the power of God. It wasn't the water or the Jordan that clean. In Naaman, it was God who cleaned Naaman. It wasn't the prophets, but was the Lord. So that's the significance of the number seven. The Lord God, he uses didactic patterns to teach us a spiritual truth. The Lord God used things that don't make sense for us. For example, for Naaman, it doesn't make sense to be washed in water seven times. For the war, it doesn't make sense to be baptized in water. Doesn't make sense. So Carlos or Mike or Charles or, or, or one of the elders submerging one person on the water. The Bible said, "Is for the forgiveness of your sin in the blood of Jesus Christ." And we say, "Amen." Amen. No make sense. Seven times in water, and I'm gonna be clean. The Lord is using that was appointing to us. Leprosy was a picture of sin. And the way to clean that leprosy was washing seven times in the water. The only way to wash away all sin is through hearing the gospel, believing. Confessing, repenting, and to be baptized for the remission of our sins in the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the tree. That's the only way. That was a picture for us. But at that moment, it didn't make sense. No sense. The same thing right here. Blood on the door spot. The Lord God told to the Israelites, you are going to celebrate the Passover. But during the Passover, I'm going to send my angel to kill the firstborn of the Egyptians. Firstborn of the families, firstborns of the animals, firstborns of the strangers, firstborn of every single family, including you, Israelites. The only way to avoid that is going to be 
and you put blood on the doorpost for us. Oh, you can say, oh, Brother Carlos, it's easy for us. Understand that. Oh, yeah, now it's easy for us. At that time, it was easy for them? No, it didn't make sense. Here, the lamb or the goat or one year, a, 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 a mayor lamb, a mayor God, perfect. And that was symbolizing Jesus Christ. Perfect. A mayor of one year. And you're going to eat the Passover. But the blood, put it over there. For us, no sense. Israelites said, for us, this don't make sense. Now, we read the Bible when they're saying, oh, that lamb represents Jesus Christ. John the baptizer said, you see now, here is the Lamb of God that take away the sins. Oh, the other you said, oh, that was Moses was taught in the Old Testament. For now, it's easy. But this Iraqi pattern was appointing to Jesus Christ and the Lord God was teaching us and a spiritual lesson, all of us. So the angel of the Lord passed over. When he saw the, the blood, he passed over. And all the families of Israel survived the years. Same thing with Amon, but seven times in the river. No sense. But for us now, we understand, it's easier to understand for us. That was a picture of the salvation for us. Number seven is a completely different number than others' numbers. For example, the human body is formed as follows. Number one, atoms. Number two, molecules. Number three, cells. Number four, tissues. Number five, organs. Number six, systems. What is the number seven? Uh, Joshua was reviewing my lesson, and I told, Joshua told me, Dad, what is the number seven? And I told Joshua, I'm going to read the number seven. In the Let's read it. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Open your Bible, please, and read with me. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Then the Lord God for man of dust from the ground and bred her into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. We got a person a human being with these six, six points. But this human being is dead. He's not alive. The only one thing that is going to make the human being alive is the breath of life. And that is the number seven. You see, human being, we are not able to do anything but ourselves. But by the grace of God, by the favor of God, we can do everything. We are alive because the Lord God is giving us every morning the breath of life. That's the only reason. And we are so arrogant, so proud, oh, and strong. I can do this one, that. That's not true. And the medicine, the people is trying to find cures or something uh, to stop or to avoid death. But Jesus is saying that he is life. God is saying that he's able to give life to everyone. And when he formed the human, body of the human being, he gave the number seven. So the number seven is different than the other six. No doubt about that. 
because the number seven belongs to the Lord, belong to God. And the last example, say six miraculously born leaders. We find in the Bible six. Number one, Isaac. Their parents, uh, their mother or, or father were born for this man. Isaac, Genesis chapter 11, verse 30. Number one. Number two, Jacob, Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. And number three, Joseph, Genesis chapter 29, verse 31. Number four, Samson, Judges chapter 13, verse 2. Samuel, number five. Uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 5 through verse 8. Number 6, John Baptist, or John the Baptizer. Number 6, Luke chapter 1, number 7. Where is the number 7? Number 7 is superior and different and completely different than the other's number. The number 7 is Jesus Christ. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, who is the number seven? It's Jesus, superior to all these six. They came in the power of God. But the number seven, God himself descended to the earth. It's completely different. It's impossible to compare Jesus with all of this. It's not possible. He is God in the flesh. And God in the flesh. And all of this, all of this were a picture of the God in the flesh. All of, all of them. But the God in the flesh, that is the number seven, Jesus the Christ, he said to Matthew, Preaching to the crowd, he said, Did you love only those that love you? And you greet only those that greet you? What is your reward? What more are you doing? The pagans, the tax collector, do the same. You should be doing more than that. And he said, Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. In other words, Jesus said, be number seven. Be number seven. Brothers and sisters, we must be number seven. Perfect as the heavenly father is perfect. You are not a child of God. And this morning, you need to repent. You need, you, you need to come back to Jesus Christ. This is the time. The perfect God, the perfect Savior, the perfect number seven is Jesus Christ. And he is calling everybody at any time. Calling to come to him. Believing in him, repenting, confessing, and be baptized to the remission of the sin. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for the attention. The lesson is blessed. God bless all of us.